Good morning. I'm going to review a newspaper article that appears in The Telegraph. It's written by Miriam Cates, MP. The title is Stop Sex Education Radicals from Infiltrating Schools. And it asserts that poorly worded guidance has encouraged teachers to use resources produced by ideological groups. And Miriam makes some very good points in here. Um, a lot of people seem to assert that they know more about this on Twitter than she does. <laughs> um, and then and lots of other people do who have been researching this for several years. So I just want to go through some of the key elements of what she's talking about and why the government want to research and investigate what's happening in schools. So she starts off the article with a scenario. Imagine you attend a training course at work, or CPD. Your manager, or it might be an external company, somebody stands up at the front and begins a PowerPoint presentation. They proceed to show you and your colleagues a series of explicit images and graphic depictions of sex acts that you might like to try. You are then asked to tell the group what you feel about masturbation. Most adults would probably find this quite horrifying. If you are compelled to take part in this training, you may be able to sue your employer for sexual harassment. That's your right as an adult and as an employee. Yet this is a situation that is experienced in schools across Britain in their relationships and sex education lessons. And while some adults might be brave enough to object and maybe walk out of the training, children can't walk out of the classroom or take their school to a tribunal for exposing them to distressing content. Last week, Miriam Cates published a report into the nature and extent of the inappropriate resources which includes examples of children being asked to draw explicit images. Told that pornography is an important part of sexual experience and that they will be celebrated if they change gender. I just want to clarify here, we're talking about children. So these are under the age of 16, up to the age of 16. Some of them as young as 11 and some of them have been in primary school have been exposed to explicit imagery. Although Miriam has been investigating this for some time, she says that she's still regularly shocked by the stories that are emailed to her and how difficult it is for parents to find out what exactly schools are teaching their children. She welcomes the news that the government has now announced a review but a lot of people, including myself, and I'm, I'm going to mention Isla Matkin, uh, No Secret Lessons, and Safe Schools Alliance, there's, there's a lot of people out there, will be asking, how on earth did we get here? Well, in 2019, the Department for Education introduced compulsory RSE framework with the aim of helping children, this is a quote, manage the challenges and opportunities of modern Britain. Whatever the initial intention was behind these changes in sex education, it has now become completely unregulated, where contested ideas are taught as fact, and children are told that healthy relationships can include sadomasochism and sex in a school toilet. The Department of Education guidance is loosely worded and inconsistent, so it leaves teachers to decide what exactly is age appropriate. It includes instructions to teach the law and facts about gender identity. Now let's just be clear, gender identity does not appear in law, and since it's a political theory, there are no facts. The Equality Act 2010 
has a protected characteristic for somebody who has a gender recognition certificate. That is not gender identity. There is transgenderism is an ideological approach. The self-ID law that was um, put forward in Scotland and has been brought in around the world in various countries is not about a factual protected characteristic of somebody. It's a belief. So there are no facts. In the guidance, it instructs schools not to use materials produced by organisations that, quote, promote extreme political positions. But it simultaneously recommends stonewall type resources for primary schools. Not sure if you're aware of how far Stonewall have fallen, but they openly promote transgenderism and gender identity, which, as we've just discussed, is not a fact and is not protected under the law. So given these inconsistencies, it's hardly surprising that schools have turned to external providers for help. Now herein lies the issue. These providers are unregulated and many of them are activists and involved in political campaigning. For example, one major player actively opposes the right of parents to withdraw children from sex education. Others campaign for gender self-identification. Many of them take extreme positions, arguing that children need to know about and accept, and this is a quote, a whole smorgasbord of niche sexual activities and gender identities. Some of these, um, as we've seen, include docking, fisting, anal, choking. Personally, I don't think any child needs to know any of those things from their school. The safeguarding implications of this should be obvious. And anyone that has done any safeguarding training... <laughs> Alarm bell should be ringing in your brain that this is a serious issue. Exposing young children to graphic sexual material is traumatic for them. Expecting children to discuss sexual desires with adults in public spaces breaks down important boundaries that children are not being kept safe from harm. If you have an adult in the room that's encouraging them and asking them to discuss explicit sexual acts. Pretending that all forms of sexual activity are equal and it is much harder for girls to resist the pressure to consent, consent to painful and dangerous acts. Teaching that consent is all that matters is both misleading because number one, children cannot consent to sex. It is also degrading and one resource tells teachers that it is, quote, best to leave feelings until last. Of course, as Miriam states, children need to know the biological facts about sex, how to stay safe and what the law actually says. However, it is the role of parents, not the state, and certainly not political activists to teach children about relationships and values. This is not some traditionalist conservative mantra. It's the first rule of safeguarding. Parents have the greatest interest in keeping children from harm. They are best placed to protect children from exploitation. And it's parents who understand when a child is ready to learn about sexual relationships. Now, you will get the people that say, well, there are some abusive parents or this. Yes, of course there are. But the majority of parents are not. The majority of parents uh, care for their children and know their children. The whole idea that teachers and schools are somehow 
superior in child rearing to children's actual parents is quite alarming. Often parents are afraid to challenge the teaching, the school, those in positions of authority and power because they fear they will be labelled a bigot or a transphobe. As a society, our preoccupation with equality and diversity, or as Barry, the warrior teacher, would like to say, the die, <laughs> um, all of our boundaries have been blurred. Yet there has scarcely been a better case for strong boundaries. And Miriam ends with, and I completely agree, we must protect children from sexualisation and indoctrination. I hope you've enjoyed my uh, interpretation of this and I hope you will look into this yourselves. And if you are a parent, Please do get in touch with your school and find out exactly what it is they're planning to teach your children. If you want any further advice, I'm going to put some links uh, underneath this video for places that you can go to for that support as a parent in speaking to schools about this. Take care. Bye for now.